Shower you and under his wings you will have home, as with the shield his truth will encompass you. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the air that flies by day, nor that which walks in darkness, neither the pestilence nor the demon of the day. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, on my hope, you have established the Most High as your habitation. Evil shall not come near you, no scourge come near your dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the viper and the adder, the lion and the dragon, you will trample on their foe. Because he has set his hope upon me, I shall deliver him, I will protect him, because he has known my hate. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and glorify him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. <coughs> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. You were transfigured upon the mount, O Christ our God, revealing your glory to your disciples as much as they were able to bear. Let your everlasting light shine also upon us sinners through the intercessions of the birth giver of God, O giver of life, glory to you, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. As we have no boldness because of the multitude of our sins, O virgin Theotokos, intercede with him who was born of you. For much more are the supplications of a mother able to incline the master to kind-heartedness. Despise not the prayers of sinners, O all pure ones, for he who condescended to suffer for us is merciful and strong to save. Let your tender mercies quickly go before us, for we have become exceedingly poor. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the sake of the glory of your name. O Lord, deliver us and cleanse us from our sins, for your name's sake. Holy God, holy might, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy might, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy might, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O Lord, cleanse us of our sins. O Master, pardon our transgressions, O Holy One, this man heal our infirmities, for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and through ages of the Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have
Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. O Christ God, worship and glorify that every season and every hour and heaven and all earth, long suffering, deeply compassionate and greatly merciful. Who lovest the just and shows mercy upon the sinner, who calls on to salvation, and who the promise of blessings to come. Accept, O Lord, our prayers at this hour, and write our lives according to your commandments. Sanctify our souls, how our bodies to write our thoughts, cleanse our minds. Deliver us from all tribulation, evil, and distress. Encompass us about with thy holy angels, and guide and guard by them, we may attain to the unity of the faith, and to the knowledge of heaven, approachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages, amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compared to the seraphim. Without the time that you gave birth to God, the Lord, who the true fail to fall, must be married by you. In the name of the Lord, Lord the Father of Lord. Through the prayer of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. O God, the Lord of hosts and fashioner of all creation, who in your incomparable tender mercy sent down your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our God. And through his precious cross, for off the handwriting of our sins, thereby triumphing over the principalities and powers of darkness. O Master and Mother of mankind, accept these prayers of thanksgiving and supplication from our sinners, and deliver us from every deadly and dark transgression, and from all the visible and invisible enemies who have sought to divorce all. May our flesh with the fear of you, and let not our hearts incline to evil words or thoughts. But wound our souls with your love, that ever gazing upon you, guided by your light and beholding you, the eternal light that no man can approach, we may send up unceasing praises and thanks to you. The Father without beginning, together with your begotten Son, and your all holy good and life creating spirit. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, O man. Forces, 
glorious lady, to the Most Holy Virgin, and ever Virgin Mary, 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 Let us commend ourselves and each other, and all our life unto Christ our God.
And through your knowledge, the weak brother perishes, for whom Christ died. And thus, sinning against the brethren and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to stumble, I will not eat meat forever, lest I cause my brother to stumble. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not you my work in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, yet at least I am to you. For the seal of my apostleship are you in the Lord. Peace be unto you who reads. And to your spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Then he will answer them, saying, 
Assuredly, I say to you, it is much as you did it not, as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal teach us repentance. Repentance is uh, the very heart of the Christian life. And we're so blessed that we have wonderful people, fathers and mothers and teachers, that remind us and teach us that uh, repentance is um, about God. When the fathers talk about repentance, they, they use the word freedom. Repentance is freedom freedom into the life that's given to us by God. It's us that makes it about other things, uh, about sin and about guilt and about shame and whatever else, but uh, we should know that it's really about God. And today's gospel reading really, really shows that, that it's all about Christ, that uh, our life of repentance is about Christ. You can imagine <clears throat> that uh, humanity would be given a a very wonderful, beautiful painting that was beautiful beyond words. And that when someone stood before it and, and viewed the painting, that it would just give them hope. It would give them light. It would lift their spirit. Uh, it would be something that just really captivated a person. But we can imagine that that painting uh, had just layers and layers and layers of dirt and grime and filth over it. That you couldn't see it. We can imagine that humanity was given a, a cleanser of sorts to clean it. To clean it, to clean the dirt, the grime, the filth away so that you can see the beauty. But then we can still very easily imagine that humanity would make it all about the cleaner. How do you clean it? How should you use it? How should you apply it? When should you apply it? How much of it should you apply? How does it work? We can imagine that humanity would make it all about the, the, the dirt and the grime and the filth. Be obsessed with that and fixated on that. We can imagine that very few people would be actually interested in the painting. We can imagine that because we know in our own reality that uh, we're so concerned about repentance. How you do it, what it is, how it works, when should you do it, how the other person is doing it, how they do it. We're so fixated on the dirt, the sin of our life, uh, that we forget that it really is about God. That repentance is not repentance-centered. Repentance is not sin-centered. Repentance is not self-centered. But repentance is Christ-centered. The Gospel reading today shows us that it is all Christ-centered. Being a Christian is about being Christ-centered. Something about God and about Christ. 
Today's Gospel reading also shows us so wonderfully how uh, repentance is Christ-centered. It's about Christ, it's about the person of Jesus Christ. But that it also uh, involves our neighbor. It involves in the day-to-day -day life the person that we're with. That I can't repent without you. And you can't repent without me, and they can't repent without us, and we can't repent without them. Repentance is uh, something that we don't do alone. We can't repent alone. We need each other. We need each other for, for maybe a thousand reasons, but some of the obvious reasons that we need each other to repent is because if we're left to ourselves, we'll make repentance about repentance. We'll make repentance about our sins and not about God. We'll make our repentance about ourselves if we don't have people. And thank God that we do have people, bishops and priests and monastics, parishes, that can teach us and re remind us and show us how to repent and what repentance is. We need people who know how to repent to show us how to repent. We need a community to repent in. I remember uh, several years ago, somebody showed me um, a composition of the raising of Lazarus. Not in our, our Byzantine icon iconography, but in religious art, Western religious art, they showed a composition of the raising of Lazarus. There was, in this composition, of course, Christ and Lazarus coming out of the tomb, wrapped in his own grave clothes. And there was Mary and Martha that were there, bowing before Christ, the resurrection and life. There were uh, people from the village that were there, and one man, you know, he covering his nose. There were the Pharisees looking on, trying to make sense of it, and then there was the cluster of disciples behind our Lord, the composition that we're familiar with. And then they showed me another slide from the next century, and that next slide uh, was pretty much the same composition, except where the village people had dropped away, you know, the guy with the covering his nose, and all his buddies, they were no longer there, so it was Christ, and Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, the Pharisees, and the disciples. Then he showed me the next century, and the next century, more dropped away. Now it was just Christ, and Lazarus, and Mary, and Martha, and the disciples, the Pharisees had dropped away. And then he shows me another side of the next century, and it's just now Christ, and Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, and the disciples are gone. And then he shows me the final slide, and it's just uh, Jesus and Lazarus. Everybody else has dropped away from the composition. This is like now we're in the 20th century, and it's just Jesus and Lazarus. The whole community has gone away, and it's just Christ and Lazarus. I, I shared this with a friend uh, a couple years ago. And I said, how tragic is that? The community just goes away, and it's just Jesus and Lazarus. And my friend said to me, oh, Father Nicholas, just be glad that Jesus is still in the composition. It's not just, you know, Lazarus in his Bible, but Jesus is still there. But that icon shows us how uh, we need to repent in a community. Father Stephen Cowley, he's the um, executive director of Orthodox Christian Prison Ministry. On today's gospel reading, you can't help but think of all the wonderful Orthodox people on the front lines feeding the hungry and giving thirst to the thirsty and clothing the naked and visiting the sick and the imprisoned. Father Stephen Cowley, uh, director of OCPM, wrote a very nice article called Unbind Him. When Lazarus comes out of the tomb, our Lord says to the people there, Unbind Him. And Father Stephen makes the point that uh, when a man or a woman comes out of prison, they come to us, and our job is to unbind them. Our job is to take the grave clothes off of them, the grave clothes of their incarceration, the shame that comes with being a felon and being convicted, and to clothe them in their street clothes and to receive them into the community and to teach them to repent. We can't repent alone. We need each other to repent, and we need to receive those who are coming to us to repent. We need people to teach us. And the fact is that when we repent, and as we get deeper to repent, and this is true for me, this is true for you, that when we begin to see how broken humanity is, when we begin to see how broken our neighbors are, when we begin to see how broken our own families are, and we begin to see how broken we are. We need each other. We need others to stand with us in that pain. We need others to be there with us. Because that burden is so heavy to bear. 
And if we don't have others standing with us, and if we don't know how to stand with others, then we just become very cynical, very angry, and very mad, and very even more broken from it. So we need just each other to stand together as we bear and shoulder and take upon the brokenness of the world. And then we also need each other because our Christianity is about each other. The gospel theory shows us that. It's about people. It's about relationships. Christianity is about the person. It's not about fixing hunger. It's not about fixing world thirst. It's not about fixing the incarceration problem. It's not about fixing the sanctity of life or fixing the same-sex attraction. It's about the people, the relationships, and the persons that are in the world, that are in our communities, that are shopping with us, and working with us, and living with us, and repenting with us. It's to know them. It's to love them. It's to minister to them. It's not to judge them. It's not to condemn them. It's not to fix them. It's not to solve their problems. But it's to bring to them love. And if uh, repentance is not about love, then it really is about itself and about our sin and about ourselves and not about God. This great Lent, as we enter, let's remember these two things that are given to us in today's Gospel reading. The first is that repentance is freedom and it's about Christ, it's not about ourselves. And let us remember that no one can repent by themselves. That we need the church, we need each other, we need the people of God, we need our neighbors and our friends to repent. Amen. Let us say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us say, Lord have mercy. O Lord Almighty, the God of your fathers, we pray you, hearken and have mercy. O Lord have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great goodness, we pray to you, hearken and have mercy. Have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Help them to sing, have mercy on them, and keep them, O oh God, by your grace. 
Tikam, Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of All America and Canada, His Eminence Nathaniel, may the Lord God remember his kingdom. All that is now and ever and through the ages of the HL, the Holy Episcopal of the Church, priests, deacons, monastics. May the Lord God remember his kingdom. All that is now and ever and through the ages of the HL, this country, its president, to those in civil authority, the courts, and the armed forces, may the Lord God remember his kingdom. All that is now and ever and through the ages of the HL, the abbess of this monastery, Mother Christophora, and the sisterhood of this holy monastery, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom. Always, now and ever, and through the ages of the age of the sick and suffering servants of God, especially the Code of Presbyterian Thomas, the Archimandrite of Alaska, the Archpriest Paul, Natalia, the Archpriest Joseph, and Alan. May, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom. Always, now and ever, and through the ages of the age of those suffering from diseases, those suffering from abuse, those suffering from addiction, the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the imprisoned, the sick. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and through ages of the age of those who have departed this life in faith and hope of the resurrection, the life eternal, especially, knew the departed Francis and Lou. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom. Always, now and ever, in the ages of the age of you and all the Orthodox Christians. May the Lord God remember his kingdom. Always, now and ever, in the few ages of the age of all. Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke 
chosen by the prophets, in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand aright. Let us stand with fear. Let us attend that we may offer the holy oblation in peace.
you this reasonable and bloodless worship, and ask you and pray you and supplicate you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon you, gifts your office, and make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Make me the change by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 That they may be to those who partake of the purification of soul for the remission of sins and the communion of your Holy Spirit, for the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, for holiness for you, and not for judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you this reasonable worship for those who have fallen asleep in the faith, for those who have fallen asleep in the faith, ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit that perfect in faith. Bless you for our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady, the Pocos, and ever Virgin Mary. Our hope, O Master, who lost mankind, we ask you and pray you and supplicate you. 
make us worthy to partake of the heavenly and awesome mysteries of this sacred and spiritual table with a pure conscience, for remission of sins, for forgiveness of transgressions, for the communion of the Holy Spirit, for the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness toward you, but not for judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call on thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say, Of worthy of thee, 
make me knowledge or ignorance, and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of my most pure mysteries, for the remission of my sins, and of the life of my last Of my mystical supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of thy mystery to my enemies, neither like Judas will I give thee a kiss, but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of thy holy mysteries be neither to my judgment nor to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the freedom of soul and body.
save your people and bless your inheritance.
father's family or visiting family this weekend, so that was good for all of us. We didn't have to trouble Father Sayadi to come out on such a cold morning so far to serve. So uh, thank you. And there's lunch for everyone. Please do stay. As you probably know, it's supposedly the last day we eat meat um, until Pascha. So however you are able to do that or um, whatever, keep the fast. But uh, we're all serving meat today because we thought <coughs> So enjoy and, and eat party. Uh, but in the liturgical cycle, that's um, perhaps a change for, for the uh, diet, but in the liturgical cycle, we start using special uh, Triodians hymns starting tonight through the whole week. It becomes a very interesting week leading up to uh, next Sunday. <coughs> so we'll be doing that here, of course, all the services in, in the monastery. Uh, there is no liturgy permitted to be served on Wednesday and Friday this week. That's why our next liturgy will be on, on Saturday, and you have, the, you have the schedule for that. Stay safe and warm and healthy. Mother Caratina did return home from the hospital, or second hospital stay, but she's still very sick and needs our prayers for her recovery, uh, to recover from the infection and also to get her strength back. So she um, did receive communion here today in the, on the side in the little room there. A little easy for her, and um, she's walking around a little bit and so on. But you know she's the gardener, so the flowers in her have a little time off, but soon they're going to be pushing their heads out. She's going to be pushing her head out and, and uh, <laughs> join up again. So may God restore her to health. <clears throat> The Master of Christ, our God, <clears throat> King of the Ages, Maker of all things, I thank thee for the good things thou hast given me, especially for the communion of thy most pure life fading mysteries. I pray thee, O gracious Lover of man, preserve me under thy protection beneath the shadow of my wings. Enable me to my last breath to partake worthily with the pure conscience of thy holy face for the remission of my sins and unto life eternal. But thou art the bread of life, the fountain of holiness, the giver of all good. And to be we ascribe glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Freely, God, has given me thy body for my food, O thou Lord. Freely, God, has given me thy body for my food, O thou who art the fire, consume the unworthy. Consume me not, O my Creator, but instead enter into my members, my veins, my heart. Consume the thorns of my transgression, cleanse my soul, and sanctify my reasonings. Make firm my knees and body, and my five senses. Nail me to the fear of thee, always protect, guard, and keep.